Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do a little bit of a different video. I'm wanting to do a little play date with some of the makeup products in that that I picked up in my recent haul video. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked below. I thought I would combine that with a kind of little overview of what I'm currently using in my shower routine, so like hair care as well as skincare for the morning. A couple of weeks ago I said how my skin's been in such a good way. The minute I say, oh I'm gonna share my routine, my skin goes black. And I feel like it's probably down to the fact that I'm trying a lot of different makeup products on my skin at the moment and they all contain different ingredients and so that could potentially be it it could also be the fact that I'm not getting much sleep and I'm a bit stressed at the moment I thought I would just show you what I'm using anyway I do plan to change a couple of things perhaps in the near future just you know experimenting so there might be some updates in the new year as well Woo! so the routine that I've done today is kind of what I like to call my like pampering morning routine I only have a shower in the mornings twice a week and that's because I shower every night I love going to bed clean I think it's better for your sheets it's better for your sleepwear you feel really cozy having a nice warm shower and it's a nice way for me to calm down I don't like to wash my hair at night if I can avoid it so I typically will have a shower every night and then twice a week I'll have another shower in the morning as well that is when I do like my hair washing and I shave all the things and stuff so first thing I do when I get in the shower is wet my hair and I go in with my matrix total results brass off color obsessed shampoo this is my third bottle of it I absolutely love this purple shampoo it's so good for toning my blonde hair if I haven't done it for a while I'll leave it on more as like a sort of mask for about five minutes but generally it's okay just to kind of use it massage it in and rinse it out I like that it's not quite as drying as some other purple shampoos on the market and it's really effective then I go in with my conditioner and just FYI this portion of the video is sponsored by Coco and Eve I've been trying out their like a virgin mask for a couple of months now I've actually gone through a whole tub this is my second one that just arrived the other day the reason I was so to try this is the scent my gosh it's coconut and fig and as you guys know I'm having a bit of a thing for fig at the moment it has a really convincing kind of natural scent to it like it doesn't smell too artificial I've really been enjoying it I find that it makes my hair really really soft and moisturized so it's very much designed to just infuse your hair with a lot of moisture and softness and I definitely feel like it achieves that it feels my hair feels really soft and manageable it also comes with one of these little like tangle tamers this is like a little wet brush which I find really good for using in the shower to kind of comb through and detangle and then also out of the shower so that I don't get any breakage in my hair. It's not a good idea to brush your hair when it's wet with a normal brush because you can get breakage. So these sort of wet brushes that are kind of a little bit more like a comb are a lot gentler on your hair. This is also a cruelty free product and it's also 100% vegan. So after I've applied it to my hair I like to leave it for about five minutes and I will do my body wash and shaving. And the body wash I tried out today, this is actually a new one, I've only used this once. The Core is Pure Greek Olive Shower Gel that I just hauled. I just showed this in my latest haul, I wanted to try it out. So far so good, it's a first impression, it smells really nice. It didn't leave me feeling all like kind of dehydrated like soaps can and I can still just smell the scent on my skin too, it's not too overpowering. Now I'm gonna get into my skincare routine which I keep behind this cupboard here. Hi guys. <laughs> I will do a nighttime routine at some stage as well so you guys can see what I use in the evening but in the morning what I've been using, this is actually a product I've quickly reintroduced into my skin after moving into this apartment because we have to use air conditioning here and it's a lot drier. I feel like my skin gets dehydrated really easily. So I've gone back to adding the Drunk Elephant Beak Hydra serum to my routine because this is one of the best humectants that I've used but you have to layer it with a moisturizer after so I go in with like two to three pumps depending how dehydrated my skin's feeling but then I'll go immediately in with the Drunk Elephant Lala Retro this is your emollient actual moisturizer so you start with like a hydrator or a humectant and then you go in with a moisturizer something that's got emollients in it and helps to prevent the water loss from the skin kind of seals everything in basically it's full of like marula oil and a bunch of other amazing oils I can't remember them off the top of my head I think there's about six different oils in it I'm just finding that that combination is giving me really good sufficient moisture and I go in with eye cream and for like since March I was using the Drunk Elephant Sea Tango which is my favorite eye cream it's really nice and thick and nourishing and I actually noticed quite a change in my under eyes like they definitely have gotten less discolored over time however I just ran out and I haven't had a chance to buy a new one so I've just been trying to use up the Shaba complex eye serum which I don't like as much but it is still a nice eye cream I just take a teeny teeny tiny amount of that and just put that around my eye you may have noticed I don't really use a cleanser in the morning if I have a shower the water itself is enough to kind of cleanse my skin and I would have cleaned my skin really well the night before so I don't really need to use a cleanser but if for some reason my skin's feeling particularly grimy or I feel like it 
I go in with the Drunk Elephant Peaky Bar. I keep it on this really cute little soap dish. That would be the cleanser I would use in the morning if I wanted to cleanse my skin. Then comes the most important step, the one that I'll never skip, sunscreen. So at the moment I'm using the Antipodes Immortal SPF 15. You might be worried that it's such a low SPF, but the reality is the difference between an SPF 15 and an SPF 30 or a 50 is just a couple of percent. The other thing to consider is that a lot of the SPFs that are like SPF 50 in the States are not actually allowed to be sold here because they actually don't meet the requirements to be called SPF 50 here. Quite often in Australia and New Zealand we'll have products come in and there'll be a sticker with the SPF rating and if you lift that up you actually see that there's a higher SPF rating underneath. So a lot of products that come from the states that are SPF 30, 50 get relabeled as SPF 15 here because they just simply aren't actually the SPF rating that they're stating, like they don't meet the Australian New Zealand requirements which are so much higher. This is a zinc based physical sunblock and it's made in New Zealand as well which is really cool. So today I want to just do a little play date with a few new products to show you guys including this because so many of you wanted to see that in action. So I'm going to start out with the Smashbox Primerizer. I'm wanting to go through and retry some products I haven't tried for a while just to see whether I still like them, whether I still have the same kind of opinion of them or some products that I'm just looking at in my drawer going I have no idea what I think of that. So I've been doing a lot of trying of different primers and foundations and concealers and stuff hence why I think I'm breaking out a bit because during like September I stuck with the same makeup routine for like over a month because I was moving and stuff and traveling and my skin was really happy so I suspect that's probably why. It does still have silicones in it, it's not a silicone free primer but it is one that feels quite lightweight and does feel pretty like hydrating and plumping. If you do your skincare routine quite early in the morning and then usually wait to do your makeup later this can be a nice step to go in just to kind of re-plump the skin before makeup. And then the foundation I'm going to put on for you guys today is a very popular one. CYO Long Lasting Foundation in 101. This is made popular by the Taylor. My video two videos ago, uh, the iHerb sponsorship video, someone was like this feels more sponsored by the Taylor than iHerb and I had a good laugh because I did mention her a few times in that video. I got this foundation a while ago and I just didn't really get much of a chance to try it much. The colour of it's really nice, it's kind of like a sort of greyish neutral beige like very muted undertones it's perhaps a touch on the dark side like it really when it's blended in it really matches my face itself quite well but my neck's a little bit lighter so I have to go in with a bit of bronzer to kind of match it. The sponge I'm going to use to blend it in is by Pony Cosmetics so you can get this off Yes Style. I actually bought this a while ago and didn't really show you guys that I'd got it. I've been using it the last sort of week or so and I'm really enjoying it. It puffs up a lot when you get it. It's still got a slightly firmer feel than the Flower Beauty sponge but it's definitely very sort of plushy and beautiful and I love the shape of it with these flat edges. I definitely prefer blending in this foundation with a sponge which I'm pretty sure the Taylor prefers it with a brush, she generally prefers a brush, but for me it just looks a little heavy with a brush and I much prefer how this kind of slightly shears it out and makes it look a little bit more skin like. It's absolutely a formula that looks beautiful on the skin kind of all day and it does stick around all day. I did a performance the other day and I had to do my makeup at like 10am and I didn't get home till 11 like at night and my skin looked amazing. I would call this a medium to full coverage foundation, I think it's quite adaptable. I think one pump will give you medium, two pumps gives you full. It won't get you to total coverage though, so it's not like the Marc Jacobs Remarkable sort of coverage level where it can almost act as a concealer as well. It's still for me, I need concealer on breakouts. I am just going to pop on a little bit of my MAC Studio Finish Concealer in NC10. Just on these few little breakouts over here. For under eye concealer I'm going to use this, the MAC Studio Fix Concealer. This is also an NC10 but this runs very fair, this is a lot lighter than the NC10 Studio Finish like the concealer I use on my face. This matches my actual complexion really well. The Studio Fix Liquid Concealer in the NC10 is very much a highlighting brightening kind of colour for me. So I'm going to pop a bit of that under my eyes just to like brighten. This has a very strong kind of paint smell, like it literally smells like paint and everyone always says that about Studio Fix Fluid and the foundation which to me is quite mild, I don't really, I'm not bothered by it but this is quite strong in the concealer. Blend that out. I'm just going to set my face a bit with the model's preferred mineral veil. So I have actually both of the hourglass palettes and in the haul video I was like I think I'm going to gift this to someone else because it's meant to be the palette for slightly deeper complexions. I have a feeling that I actually will enjoy this 
if I think about it slightly differently. So my plan today is to use the edit for the one that you guys really wanted to see, which is meant to be the palette for lighter complexions. Show you guys what I'm thinking of it because I have sort of formed an opinion of this one. And then I think what I'll do tomorrow is like set up my camera again and just film me using this and then kind of give a little mini comparison review. Video is going to be very long. <laughs> I had really conflicting opinions in the comment section. Like some of you were like, "No, no, I love the unlocked palette," and others were like, "Oh yeah, um, please don't get the unlocked palette. I love the edit for." I feel like everyone has a different opinion, and I think it's all about how you use these products. What I'm going to do then is decide which one I want to keep because I don't need to keep both. Pick the one I like better, and then donate the other one to a friend. I've actually got a friend who would love to get this for Christmas. She won't care if I've used it very lightly, so that way I can give you guys my opinion on which one I think is better suited. I'm not convinced that this is a perfect fair skin palette and my reasoning is because first of all dim light for me is too dark it might not look it when you lift it up next to my face but it definitely darkens my complexion the highlight shade in here also is just a little bit too dark for me so I kind of have to use this more as a blush topper which is a bit redundant when this kind of shade is pretty much spread through the blushes so I would say I can use like four, maybe five of the colors out of the six really successfully, which when you're paying that much money, you kind of want to be able to use the whole thing. I'm going to try out the Sheer Powder Brush from Bobbi Brown, and I'm pretty sure this is the brush that the Anna Edit loves to use, and it's a really nice sized brush for these little pans because they're so small. I'm going to start by mixing dim light with diffused light to kind of hopefully create a color yeah, see, I can still see that darkening my skin. So I might have to just go in with diffused. Okay, no, I'm going to stick with this because it's just not really working. I need brightening. I just thought that mixing those colors would work, but it's very subtle, but I can see a kind of ruddiness going over my skin when I use dim light. It's just not the best color for my complexion. What I might do instead of mixing it with ethereal light, I think I'll mix it with the bronzer. See if I can use it that way. The bronzer I think I can get away with on its own, but it might kind of soften it a little bit. It's kind of working. So we've got Luminous Glow and Euphoric Fusion. So one is a little bit more peachy and the other's a bit more plummy. I think I'll go in with this, the Euphoric Fusion, the plummy one. Just on my little Surat Beauty Blush brush. I mean, hourglass blushes are just gorgeous. The highlighter here, Euphoric Strobe Light, is pretty much the color that's in the blush. I find that this highlighter is too dark for me to use down the center of my face. It leaves a kind of muddy, sort of dirty look to the skin because my skin's too fair. It's okay on the tops of my cheekbones because I've got like the other blushy colors and stuff around there in the bronzer. Just putting a bit of the diffused light over top. Oh, I just look muddy. It's really hard to pick up on camera. For brows today, I want to try out this. This is the Etude House Drawing Eye Brow Slim. This is in the color gray brown. This is like one of those micro pencils. It's one that I bought a while ago and I just haven't had a really a chance to use it properly. Ooh, spoolie's good. And I think this one was actually recommended to me by one of you guys. Reminds me a lot of my BH Cosmetics HD brow pencil. What do you think? I like that. Then I'm just going to pop through some of this Marcel Perfect Brow. This is in the shade Light to Medium. This is a Canadian product. It was kindly sent a while back. I really like it. Such a tiny, tiny brush on it, so you can get such precise application. I'm going to pop on a little bit of eye primer. I'm using the NARS eye primer. This is their tinted smudge proof eyeshadow base. I haven't really used the tinted one yet. I got sent this a while back. I'm just going to take some of this bronzy color on a brush and use it as a crease shade. And then for my actual lid, I'm going to pop on the Stila Shimmering Glow in Kitten. This is from that little trio pack that I picked up. And just kind of blend it out a little bit. I'm applying this just to the mobile lid and a little bit on the inner corner as well. I restrained for so long, but I knew I would love these, so it was stupid not to try it earlier. Just going to smudge on a little bit of eyeliner. Essence Extreme Long Lasting and smudge that in. Just putting on a nude liner. This one's by Annabelle. It's their matte waterline. And then for mascara, what I've been doing this week is actually layering my Lancome Monsieur Big with the Hamish, that's how you pronounce it, the Hamish mascara, which I didn't know when I bought this was a tubing mascara, but I soon discovered when I went to wash it off in the shower after wearing it for the first time. On its own though, it's just a little bit too much of a wet formula to really build the volume I like initially. So I've been layering them. I go in first with the Lancome 
to kind of build up a bit of juicy volume. I just do this on my top lashes. I lots of forehead wrinkles today because I'm going like this all the time. Calm down. Then I go on top with the Hamish mascara. And I find that this basically smudge proofs my long con mascara, which is not super smudgy on my top lashes, but my bottom lashes, I can't really wear it because it does smudge. I coat the top lashes anyway, and it kind of elongates them a little bit and then I take that mascara and use it on my bottom lashes. After I've done my top lashes I don't re-dip the mascara because I find that I get too much on my lower lashes that way so this is just remainder of whatever was from the first dip for my top lashes. Really feeling a nude with this look so why don't we do a bit of matte blankety action. I mean it really is just the perfect nude colour. <laughs> so that's the finished makeup look there. I'm about to finish drying off my hair and styling it but I'm going to sign out for today because as I say I want to come back tomorrow and show you this product in action and then I'll finish the video up there. If you're still watching leave me a comment below telling me what your favourite nude lip colour is because I'd be really interested to hear and it will let me know those of you who are still watching. <laughs> Guys, I nearly forgot to show you the body cream I've been using lately because you know I've been trying to moisturize every day and I, I forgot before. I've been using up the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Boom Boom Cream. I got given this as a gift from a subscriber and it is really nice. I'm not sure it's necessarily like the best cream out there, like everyone raves about it. It's a very like warm vanilla -y caramel kind of scent. If you live in Australia and you know those Peter Alexander candles that smell like vanilla caramel, that's exactly what this smells like. I wouldn't necessarily say it's like an absolute holy grail for me. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to use this up. I've nearly finished it. And I've also been using the Glamouflage Vera Vamp Body Cream. This is in Frangipani. Oh my gosh, this smells absolutely beautiful. This smells divine. This is so intensely frangipani scented so if you don't like frangipani you won't like this it also has a really slight shimmer so this is kind of the one i would reach more for for special occasions rather than day to day because it does have a sheen to it mainly just use body lotion on my legs because on my body i use the la roche posay spf 50 nutritive oil so this is a hydrating enough to kind of hydrate my limbs but it's also got the spf factor the reason i don't really use spf on my legs is most of the time my legs are covered i typically wear long dresses pants i don't really get my legs out that much in summer and and if I do, then I'll put SPF on them. But for day to day, I pretty much keep my legs covered. So I just wanted to pop back in with those because I forgot to mention them. And that is part of my routine as well. Hello again. So it is the next day. So I'm trying out the Unlocked palette today. So there isn't actually a finishing powder that works for me. This is too dark. Obviously, this is way too dark. And this is the bronzer. But what I thought I could do to try and use it is actually to sweep all three and use it as my bronzer. It does mean that this palette doesn't basically contain a finishing powder for me. But it would basically be a blush bronzer highlight palette which is very similar to something like this we've got bronzer blush highlight I just wanted to give it a go just to see you know whether that would be something that I would like that definitely works I'm going to go in I think today with this more peachy one just because I used the plummy one in the other palette yesterday oh getting very grabby on my skin not so sure about that now I was playing around with this highlight actually last night and it reminds me so much of the Omrizi highlight by Anastasia Beverly Hills in the sense of it is quite fair but the undertone in it I think is just way too gold for me especially I can't use it down the center of my face I put some on last night and I was like it just looks way too gold look and it's very glittery I think it's gorgeous as like a little bit of shimmer on the top of the cheekbones but this is a very much like a micro glitter highlighter it will emphasize texture do I want to do this it's just not quite the right color for my complexion I don't know if you can kind of see there's like micro glitters on my nose I'm just trying to cover it up so here are my honest thoughts I don't particularly love either one. I'm gonna hold on to the Volume Edit 4. I like the blushes in here better. It has my diffused light, which I love. The bronze is really nice in this, and I can mix it with dim light to kind of make it work. The highlighter, I'm gonna struggle to use, but I could use it as an eyeshadow. And if I travel with this, I could just take an extra highlighter. What I really want is for Hourglass to come up with custom palettes, like where you can choose what pans you want to put in it because I would put nude bronze light I'd put diffused light I would put those blushes are really nice and the highlight I would pick one of those beautiful metallic highlighters they had in the last year's like metallic highlighter kit that was amazing they need to release more trios as well I think trios are just easier anyway thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video found it useful I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video bye